we live in the worded world and the wordless world. And in the worded world, that's the world, again, we're most familiar with. But then there's this non-conceptual aspects of every experience. We discover that there is this freedom that is kind of the fundamental, inconceivable, mysterious basis of everything. When we delve into the nature of any experience, we can discover what we might say is equally present in all experience. And no matter how you're describing the, the phenomena, it's beyond description. That's true of the greatest pleasure and the greatest pain, that they're both indefinable, they're both outside of any box of any interpretation. Nick Heim here from nisagayoga.com. Welcome to another episode of the Non-Duality Podcast. This is part two of Paul Dobson's conversation with John Astin. The streaming forth of whatever this is can stream forth as interpretation. It can stream forth as the seeming dissolving of interpretation. It can stream forth as feeling like a self. It can stream forth as as the disappearance of a sense of a self. I mean, it can stream forth as anything, as whatever is appearing. And that's a presence that is inviolable, that's, that's in, unmovable, that you can't get rid of it. Oh, well, yeah, you're trying to chase this thing called presence. <laughs> then you realize, just try getting out of presence. Yeah, presence is what we've got. Yeah, it's all we've got. <laughs> <laughs> it's all we've yeah. got. And it's like, oh, wow. Oh, it's like, this is... And, and then there's this kind of, you know, you can call it like the great relaxation because it's like, this is it, just as it is, however it's appearing. The nature of this is actually to, to slip away. And so that idea of being able to hold on to something, an insight, a realization, a moment of clarity, it's like, no, this, the nature of reality is for it to not stay here. So that whole attempt to maintain and sustain whatever it is we are endeavoring to sustain or maintain, it could be in a very conventional sort of framework of, I just feel a moment of happiness and I want to hold on to that. Or it could be very kind of more esoterically spiritual, like, well, I have this profound like realization, I want to hold on to that. It's like, that is not the nature of things. <laughs> they don't, they're constantly letting go of themselves. They're constantly slipping away. I call it the constant refreshing, you know? It's like the reset button is just on permanently. The whole world like comes into existence freshly in every, like li literally, I mean, what an amazing thing. It's all let go of. It's all, you could say all forgiven. It's all released. It's all um, transformed. You know, every instant is the transformation. Every instant is, is the rebirth. Every instant is the, the, the revitalization, the refreshing of this. And, uh, that, that's just an, it's just incredible, you know, it's mind-blowing. This has never been like this before. It's never been encountered like this before. And no matter how seemingly similar it might appear, like, it's, it's, if I really look with a kind of a little more care, a little more precision, I can see that, yeah, no, actually, I'm, it's, the lights never looked quite like this. The shapes have never looked quite like this. Colors have never, I've never seen the colors like this before. I've never, like, so I'm, I'm in a new universe. Like, I'm like, I just arrived on a new planet, a new dimension that I've never existed in before. Like, literally. Yeah, exactly. There's no reference point really for what this is, literally. No. Because I've never encountered it before. Other than our imagined memories. Other than, me yeah, memory is what sort of seemingly creates the sense of continuity from moment to moment, I would, it would seem to be. From the standpoint of experience itself, the moment is without precedent. Because where is the precedent? There's just, there's just this flash. And there's another perspective, right, that we have a history and a memory, and, right? Mm. But then then we can I say, you know, reality is like kaleidoscopic. You turn the kaleidoscope and, and you can look and go like, well, actually, I can't find a beginning here. I can't find a, a, something that preceded this moment. Not in my experience. I can find it in this referencing uh, a representation or a, a memory of, of what was. But the actual nitty gritty, like aliveness 
of, of actual presence of, it, it is like a concrete presence uh, that's not just a, a shadowy echo of something that I, you know, we would say memory is like referring to like a, like a, I don't know what it is exactly, but, but like, you know, this, like, like this, uh, this, you know, it's like this here-ness, this like the actuality of what's, what's concretely present. It's quite palpable. It's quite, um, you know, it's, it's, it's here. And, and yet that's, what's so curious. It's like, it's can't catch hold of it. You know, it's kind of like a rainbow, isn't it? You think you kind of, you can drive towards a rainbow forever. Can't you? Never <laughs> You'll never get to it. You know, it's kind of that sort of thing. It's never, there's never, you know, never a completion. To and it. yet everything. Yeah. And yet, and yet the, 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 the appearance of what we would call life and a world and ourselves doesn't stop at least not in my experience it's like that goes on you know the the seeming flow of time the seeming sense of spatiality um of being a person uh in a world you know it's like it's very paradoxical it's like all of that is there in a sense it's here right now a conversation two people on a thing called a computer you know all of that's here and yet at the same time not locatable, not, not pin downable, not like, so it's, it's in a sense, it, it's sort of here and not here simultaneously, which makes no sense, you know, in a linear kind of way. And yet that's our actual experience is that absolutely palpably present. I mean, you know, experience is here, but what is experience? It's like you find it. Mm. You've got nothing to compare it to, have you? It's just just experience. What 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 else is there outside of experience to compare it to? It's no. like this non-experience, or what would that be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, experience of non-experience. I guess. Yeah, you can't you can't have a non-experience, can you? It's uh, just doesn't make. It's just beyond. Yeah, any imagination. And I and I think that from a human standpoint, because some people will understandably ask, okay, well, what, why, why are you even like you know talking about this stuff i mean one is just the pure curiosity of 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 life itself seems to be curious about itself so i seem as an extension of life to be curious about all of this yes instinctively right so i think it's like you know i mean i have a I mentioned i have a daughter and you know curiosity was very clear to me is instinctive in the human you know i mean she just what is this what is this that was her question you know coming into the world what is this what is this what is this? Mm. so so that's one obvious, you know, answer to the question why why write these books and explore this stuff with people. But but I also think that you know if we we can see that that humans personally and interpersonally and societally, you know, arguably struggle and and something we might call suffering exists for people, and um, it often acts as the impetus to then explore more. Uh, to become curious about what's happening and why they might be suffering and how they might resolve that suffering. But that's what I was going to come to next is the, the practical implications of this. It's not that suffering's gone away, but I don't even know what suffering is. So then there's all this kind of, I guess the only way I could describe it is all this space around it. And it's no longer caged in as pain or sadness or anything like that. It's It becomes a, almost a, a curious event um in experience to be explored you're going almost more deeply into it in a way there's paradoxically a freedom if you take a state that we would a state of mind that we would associate with suffering human suffering like worry or fear or anxiety or insecurity or all the all the words we think of as sort of negative states of mind that we try to resolve or, or overcome or transcend or whatever well what, what what are they you know no matter how we might be labeling the experience, no matter how we might be defining it and categorizing it, again, what is it more fundamentally? And, and through that exploration of, of kind of discovering what it is that's common about all experience, and, and when we delve into the nature of, of any experience, regardless of how we're describing it, we can start to acquaint ourselves. We can discover what we might say is fundamental, fundamentally 
common to um, or equally present in all experience. And we've already been talking about that. One is the fact that you can't pin down what it is. Ultimately, no matter how you're describing the, the phenomena, it, it, it belies description. It, it, it's beyond description. So it's inconceivable. It, it's bottomless. It's infinite. It's ungraspable. That's true of the greatest pleasure and the greatest pain. They share that feature, don't they? Yeah. That they're both indefinable. They're both outside of, the, of any box of any interpretation you discover they're kind of cloud-like, ambiguous, indefinable, um, boundless nature. And then it's like, it's much less a sense of, of being caught in something or stuck in a thing, a state, because you realize it's, it's wildly open-ended and indefinable. What, what, stuck in what exactly? It's like, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck in infinity, you know, we're not stuck at all. Or you could say we live in two worlds. We live in the worded world and the wordless world. And in the worded world, that's the world, again, we're most familiar with kind of keeping score almost, right? But then there's this other approach to well-being, I say, that, that has to do with the other side, not the worded world of experience, but the wordless world, the, the non-conceptual aspects of every experience. Because then you discover, like I say, an entire, uh, like another realm of well-being. And, but it's a realm of well-being that's not dependent on what it looks like, not dependent on, on how we're describing it. It's not dependent on what we think it is. It, it's not dependent on anything. Well, that's always the case, isn't it? A moment of terrible heartbreak and sadness is pure presence. It's primally there, right? Just as a moment of great ecstasy and bliss is also primally there. We, we discover that there is this freedom, dare I say, even a kind of beauty that is kind of the fundamental, seemingly inconceivable, mysterious basis of everything. And that can be discovered to be the case, even in difficult moments. You know, enter into the beingness of it, the presence of it, and it will reveal, it will reveal a, a kind of a, like another order of well-being, one that isn't contingent on the descriptions and the definitions. Because the described world is at the same time indescribable, and the interpreted world at the same time is uninterpretable. So it's one thing that can be both described and is also utterly indescribable. That, that's what's really astonishing. You know? you know, one of your chapters in your book is about how reality is like a... A psychedelic trip it's like it's full of color and emotions and and just so much complexity and detail and and sound and just oh it's just it's just overwhelming really where if you really sort of look at it in comparison to that which is so simple it's beyond words it's what a what a trip right <laughs> you know like all that's going on and yet you know, we're trying to find a sense of being at home in our experience you know that's like a longing of the human to feel like they're at home in their own skin what a simple thing you know, to feel like I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm okay, you know, as I am. It, it's almost like coming into a place where we're not trying to get to some other moment, you know? Wow, you know, I, I've spent so much of my life kind of rejecting, you know, aspects of my own experience, like imagining that they're not okay, basically. Or, or imagining that, that I must be somehow other than I am. And that's stressful, you know, at a human level. That's, 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 a, that's a tense sort of way of orienting to, to, to life, like that, that this has to be different than it is. I have to be different than I am. And um, again, it's one of the great paradoxes that just being as we are, you know, is, is, is just can be so profoundly transformative without trying to transform anything. But just being as you are, it, it just opens up. Uh, yeah, one can begin to get a sense of that. Like, wow, there, there is a kind of capacity to feel at home in the midst of everything. I've got woods outside my house. And it doesn't matter what way the, the trees are growing or the plants underneath the trees are growing or what bugs are under there or whether they're a caterpillar or a butterfly or what, or what stage in their development they're at. They are exactly as they are. It's nature expressing mm -hmm. seems to be in this human realm where we now have this ability to, to add concepts and 
mind stuff on top of it that it all becomes this manic rush to to i don't know achieve something unachievable basically (laughs) you know we, we are an extension of reality we are the reality we are the vastness of life what is existence looking for through all of the ways humans search for X, Y, and Z? You know, what, what, are, what is it we're, we're looking for? Maybe we could say, you know, it's searching for itself. You know, it's the only thing. It's, it, of course, it's all that it ever finds anyway. So in all the different experiences that we seek out, through each one of them, it's like we just find another flavor of life. So, you know, from that standpoint, there's nothing wrong or bad about the search either. By actually stopping and looking at what's here now, this instant, we can discover that the, those the very things that we're aspiring for are actually the very nature of life itself and have never been absent. The openness, the connection, the intimacy, the, the ease, the very thing that you're looking for is this. Yeah, well, it's inherent in it, isn't it? It's, it's, you see it in myths a lot, don't you? You have to go through hell to get to heaven or... By that simple practice, for example, of allowing what's here to simply be as it is, it is as it is. It's not even allowing it. It just is as it is. But exploring like what it is, we could say, it's like we discover that, that, that these states that we thought were problems are actually pure power and pure vitality and pure presence. And that changes everything because they're, they're not the threats we imagine them to be, for one. Their, 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 their pure presence of reality itself. And again, these states of mind that we think of ourselves as stuck in and, and that these are like fixed things and almost like objects, like standing there in our way or things that we're somehow the victims of. No, they're this incredible dynamic display of, 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 of energy that's self-liberating and on the move and constantly resolving itself and constantly shape-shifting. And it's like, and that's um, they're, 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 the pure power of the cosmos itself, I mean, like literally. Even the most difficult state of mind is, is pure Shakti, you know, pure energy, pure, pure radiation of, of, of this, whatever this is, that's radiating what we call reality, that's appearing as all of this. That is always the case, no matter how we might be conventionally characterizing it. Everything is the shining forth of, of what else could it be but the shining forth of life itself, of reality itself, this in, inconceivable, mysterious thing we call life, we call existence, we call reality. We never lose the ground. You know, we, never, we can't lose the ground because the ground is everything. You can find a, a freedom that exists even in the midst of the most seemingly challenging of life moments because the because the, the experience really does lie fundamentally outside the bounds of any interpretation any framework that we're we're, we're attempting to capture it within because it just won't be captured life is too it's too free to be captured by any of our imaginings by any of our um, frames of reference and that that's the freedom. That's the great freedom that exists in and as every moment of existence, no matter how it's being characterized. Living the Life That You Are by non-duality author and counselor Nick Hyam can help you find authentic peace, confidence, and connection with all that is, right here and now. The book examines the modern-day dilemma of loneliness, revealing that its root cause is the belief that we're all separate individuals bound by personal limitations. We feel disconnected and incomplete, assuming that life's fullness exists somewhere out there and that we must be, do, or have more for lasting fulfillment. But the truth is, Despite our limited appearance, we are actually boundless. There is no divide between our internal and external worlds. This is the ancient philosophy of non-duality. We are the wholeness we are seeking. The life that you are is all that is right now. Every texture, flavor, fragrance, sight, and sound in their abundance. 
using radical mindfulness, a combination of mindfulness and non-dual self-inquiry, this book will guide you toward awakening to the transformative truth and love that is your foundational being.